Are you being held to ransom by the economy? Now, one of the toughest things about working in today's environment as a business owner is that the economy is just changing radically all the time. And sometimes things like raising interest rates or unemployment being at an all time low is working against us as a business owner. And it feels like the tail's wagging the dog. In this awesome presentation, we've got three keynotes and we're gonna be talking about are you being uh, you know, are you being held to ransom by the economy or can you take control back? So the three presentations are going to talk about number one, you know, using technology, not just Zoom to make Zoom calls, but actually using technology to improve your customer's experience and to actually eradicate some of the costs of running your business in today's environment. The second presenter is going to be talking about outsourcing, but once again, not the traditional, oh, we're going to have someone in the Philippines type outsourcing, but how do you choose which parts of your business to outsource? How do you find the right people to do those tasks? And how do you make sure that they're actually adding value to your organization? And the last and final piece, we're going to be talking about planning cycles. Now, in our business, we're all about business planning. And what we found over the past few years is that the way the economy is shifting right now, we used to run 90-day plans and we found that that was sufficient because it's better than 12 months, but now we're running six-week planning cycles. So I'm going to talk about the methodology we use to run six-week planning cycles. I'm going to show you some of the key elements that you need to actually identify within your own business so that you can work out what to focus on. So enjoy the presentations. I'm going to hand over to the first keynote right now. and let's learn how you can take control back of your business and stop being hijacked by the economy. So we've got Delia who hopefully, yeah, there she is right on my screen. Um, Delia McKenzie who works with Integrate and uh, they're um, a great outsourcing company. They've been doing this for many, many years and I've had good and bad experiences and I'm curious as to who else on this call has had um, mixed experiences with outsourcing. Can I just get a quick show of hands for those people? Yep, I know Andy's got his hand up. There's a couple of people. Um, here's what's happened. COVID and a couple of other tech, a couple of other economic climate things have forced our hand in being uh, working with people from home, um, with working with people remotely. And I think outsourcing is a solid pillar for a business owner who's looking to leverage their time. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Delia and uh, get her to talk a bit about how offshoring can help your business thrive in today's economy. Over to you, Delia. Thank you very much, David. Um, lovely to see everybody here. Thank you, Susie, Ian. I can see lots of familiar faces. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and please, yes, during the presentation, use the chat for questions. And if I can, we'll answer them at the end. Otherwise, I'll certainly you know, reach out to you after the, the presentation. Um, I think at the moment we can all agree that it's really hard to find good people in Australia. Staffing is one of the biggest issues that businesses across many industries are facing. Um, so my name is Delia McKenzie and I work with Integrate Offshore Solutions. And uh, my purpose and sort of mission is really to help businesses minimize the cost of wages whilst maintaining or actually improving their excellent level of service. So I'll just say that again, it's all about minimizing the cost of wages whilst maintaining or improving um, their level of service. I'm South African, um, as you can maybe hear from my slightly dodgy accent. Uh, I grew up in South Africa and studied accounting, um, and I was actually lucky enough to work there for a while before moving to the UK. But um, in South Africa, there's a huge unemployment. It's sort of 32, over 32 percent. So, so more than a quarter of the people there can't find uh, good jobs or, or work at all. Um, and I certainly know we go back quite regularly, and I know people personally who who might have a degree or a double degree, but um, they just they great capabilities, industry experience, but there just isn't the work available. And we're finding that that's similar in a lot of other countries like South America the Philippines, India, Nepal. So there's a global workforce out there that we haven't really tapped into. It's a sort of sleeping giant and full of highly motivated people that speak good English and are willing to work for a fraction of the cost. Um, I think here in Australia, we all agree as well that it's the reverse problem. We're very lucky, um, the employment is low, but then for businesses that causes a problem because there just isn't the supply um, to fulfill the demand. So my role is to connect good people to each other. We uncover the roles within a business that could be done by somebody else. 
And then we help them to find the right person and manage them so that offshoring is easy and successful and very cost effective. Um, on this slide, I just wanted to sort of go through some of the things that we're finding um, in the economy, some of the hindering factors, things that are hindering your economic growth. And the main one is, again, cost. Inflation, um, as David mentioned right at the beginning, we've had sort of a turmoil of economic change, and inflation has been one of the things that have come off the back of COVID, um, which has caused costs across your home, anything at home costs, and all your business costs to severely escalate. Um, and one of the main costs in any business is their cost of staff. A number of, of people um, who come to us come, speak to us because they have tried to employ onshore and they thought they'd probably found somebody good, but then a week or two weeks before the person's due to start, they get a phone call saying, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take your role because I've been given a $20,000 bonus somewhere else or, you know, $20,000 extra pay. So the, that cost of finding staff is, is a really significant factor in the economy at the moment that is stopping businesses um, being able to grow. And it's the cost certainly in terms of the, the staff salary, but it's also the cost of time in reinvesting each time you have to go back and search again and train again um, because staff are moving. They get offered a better job, they're offered more money and they leave. Um, so separate to that is the staff themselves. There's the cost of staffing, but if, if cost wasn't a problem, um, where are the resources? And that I think is the crux of how things have changed and how what we're finding in the economy at the moment is they just isn't the aren't the staff available and at most network meetings and business meetings I go to that staffing comes up as this the single biggest struggle limiting businesses and limiting their ability to grow um time is is another one uh, if everybody I know as, as business owners if you had all the time in the world you could do anything like everything's possible but there's just so many paths to every business that people are finding they have to work longer and longer hours just to stay afloat and just to get the tasks that they need to do done um, in order for, for business to continue. They don't have the capacity to grow the business, to go out and network and generate revenue and talk to their customers and improve customer experience. It's all spent just getting through everything that needs to get done. Um, it's a bit like a, a duck on water. It's floating, but it's paddling, paddling, paddling just to float. And there's no ways, no matter how hard that it paddles, it's never going to take off and, unless it can find its wings. Working harder isn't going to help you actually get to the next level. Um, and from a from a society perspective as well, we've come, come to realize that businesses, it, if they're not sustainable and if you're working seven days a week and it's coming at the cost of your own health, uh, your relationships, your personal relationships, um, and it's not sustainable, it's just not worth it. You have to find a balance where you can maintain your own health be and, and look after your sort of primary relationships and have work as work, not all consuming. Although it's not all bad, um, some of the things that we've learned in, in the current economy can actually help businesses grow. And interestingly, COVID's one of those because pre-COVID, we had the technology to work from home and work remotely, but we were never tested. We were never sort of pushed to try it. So everybody was like, oh, I'm not sure that it's going to work and it's not for me. And there's got all these problems. But COVID actually forced us to work remotely and forced us to change the way that we perceived working remotely. And I think off the back of COVID, we've learned that you can trust your staff, even if they're not in the office. If they are uh, working from home, they can be just as productive as if they're there, you know, in the desk next to you. Um, and then it means if you're working from home, home can be anywhere. You could be logging in from Mentone or Manila. It doesn't matter anymore. We've sort of tested that, you know, it is actually possible to have a successful work set up um, when you're working, working remotely. And that was, you know, thanks very much to technology. We were lucky that technology was in a place that we could communicate like this, work online, that they're cloud systems so that people can have access to what they need, regardless of where they are sort of um, from a location perspective. So technology's definitely played a big part. Or, and as um, Andy was saying, continues to play a big part of how you can move forward uh, within, with, with today's, within today's economy. And then there's the global workforce. Um, 
with with COVID lockdown and, and technology, we've sort of opened up the capacity to look into the global market for staffing and, and realize that it is sustainable to set people up offshore, that they are they're good people with great work ethic, they're willing to work. It's actually an honor for um, people in the Philippines and, and in other countries to work for an international or Australian company because they earn a great salary. It's a it's a low cost for us here, but for them, it's actually a really good salary in the economy that they're coming from. Um, so I think businesses now who don't look to embrace a global search when they're looking for staff really won't find their wings and won't be able to move forwards with the um, way that the future of staffing is, is going with that direction. I'd just like to talk to you now a little bit about um, offshoring, outsourcing, there are a lot of terms that you might have heard, uh, and it can be quite confusing as to which is the right one and what might be useful to you and, and your business. So the three main ones are uh, having a VA or virtual assistant, outsourcing and offshoring. Um, a VA is somebody that you employ directly. They are. It's a, there's a pro to having a VA, certainly a number of pros. Uh, firstly, they're contractors and they can work part time, so they can work just the hours that you want. They come with a laptop and a setup, so you don't have to buy or finance any of that. And they're certainly good at freeing up your time. They take away the tasks that, you know, might be keeping you at your desks. But the cons of having a VA and things to certainly just keep an eye out for is because they're contractors and they provide their own IT, there's a negative side to that in that you don't know what the security is on the device, how it's been set up who else they work for, who else's information is on their system. So from a security perspective, you don't have much control. You trust that they have antivirus and that it's up to date, but you've actually got no way of, of checking that. Um, similarly, you would look at their CV, but you don't really have any way of looking into the history of um, their employment or, or of their, their history. So understanding as much as you can about them. And they do sort of low admin, low risk, low reward type roles. So it's sort of, it's a help, but it doesn't really lift you. It, it sort of just eases the strain at the moment. Outsourcing is um, when you want a specialist. So an outsourcing company is very specialist in what they do. So the pros there are that they know, they have the technology, they have the capabilities to do the role or the process that you're looking for. So if you're a, a new company, you might outsource doing your website because that's a one sort of thing. You want it done really well and you don't want to train staff up to do it yourself. Similarly, you might outsource a process like your payroll and, and they've got the capabilities and the skills to get that done. You don't have to train them and they certainly, again, would free up your time. The cons um, with outsourcing is that you will deal with the, the outsourcing company, um, the project manager, but you won't know who's behind that, like who's actually doing the work, and they might have their own team of onshore or offshore staff, but you don't know who's who's the, the wheelhouse behind getting the job done, how that work's done, how those people are looked after. But um, so so really, you've got no control of how, of how the work is done, but in this model, you're just paying for the end result. You, you want a website, and if it's a good one and they get it done in a timely manner, that, that's what you're after. Whereas offshoring, which is our model um, at Integrate, is, is slightly different again. With offshoring, you're choosing to have your own person who works for your business and understands everything about your business, how you want to get things done, but they just live offshore. So you maintain control. You train um, the, the people. They learn your processes, your procedures and they, they do work the way you want it done. It's very cost effective. They work your hours um, and they have, a, and you get a full understanding into their background because you're part of choosing them. So there's a full understanding of their background, previous in, um, employment, and you provide their IT or you work with an offshore partner who provides their IT, we, we would do that. And that's then set up with a security in place um, so that you're very confident about how um, what the security setup is. I think from that, it's sort of, uh, we can share a little bit more about what the role of offshoring in today's economy can be based mostly on that sort of cost, time, global resource. Um, and the cost, just to give you a realistic idea of what costing offshore is, is It'll cost, if you think of a role that you would hire somebody onshore, maybe it's an accountant or a marketing executive, and what a level of experience you would want them to have, 
you would take that salary and it will cost about 30 to 40 percent of what you would pay here to hire that same person with the same qualifications offshore. So that's sort of a 60 to 70 percent savings just on the cost of the salary. Then it's always good to to consider other costs. Um, for example, you won't need to set up your own office if you work with an offshore partner. That's their role. They will have an office set up. They will pay for all the office costs. They will provide an HR team. They will look after all the HR admin because they actually employ the staff member and then second them to you. So they provide HR admin an operations team, team leaders to help manage the staff and IT and IT support. So those are a whole range of business functions that attract costs that you are not having to pay for. So offshoring is, is amazing to remove those, uh, those costs from you. Um, from a, the global workforce, just an idea of that. Just in Manila, for example, there are 700,000 graduates a year. So that's 700,000 people coming out of university each year with qualifications. And, and offshoring has been going for a long time in the Philippines. So it's not, you're not just looking at graduates. You might realistically be able to find somebody who's got more than five years experience as a tax accountant or, or as a, a marketing specialist or in engineering, as a drafting, any role. Um, there, are, there are international companies that are there and, and people have experience. And um, then the last one there, I think, is it's really important for you to think about time and where you're focusing, what you're putting your time into, could you be spending your time in a different way? And an ex exercise I'd like us to just try and do for a, a minute or two, if that's okay, is to jot down on a piece of paper, just if you've got one in front of you, a list of things that you do in a day. So um, what takes up your, what, what does a day look like for you? What tasks do you have to do in a day? And perhaps if you could even expand this to being over a week, jotting down the tasks that you do and particularly circling the ones that keep you at your desk. So which tasks stop you from networking, um, meeting clients, going out, growing your business, doing doing the parts of your the business that you love, which are the process ones. And if you could work, um, you know, work out how much of a week that takes up, you'll probably find it's 30 to 40 percent of your week you are doing low or no income earning tasks that are keeping you at your desk. So just on that side there, uh, the graph sort of would show if you could invest 40% back into your business, that's two days back into growing the business, what the effect might be on your bottom line, on your um, on your revenue. So even if you don't do this now, it's a, it would be a good exercise to take away and, and do in your own time at home. Um, and the lastly, I'd like to show you what successful offshoring looks like. So how you would set up um, your, your team offshore. And the first part is to do some research. So choosing an offshore partner is really important because there are a lot out there. It's a minefield of people offering you different things and trying to work out what will work best for you. So anything from sort of a, just a, a recruitment company, he'll find you someone and leave it to you all the way through to what we offer at in Integrate Reserve fully managed service to support you right from the start and then continue to get the best out of your staff. The second part is uh, taking those tasks that you wrote um, in the time diary and creating a job description. So who exactly are you looking for offshore and, and can we find that person? So creating the job description and finding the right person, because in the end, if, if you hire onshore or offshore, it's all about finding that person who fits your values, fits with the culture of your business, that will, it's their career. So they really become part of your team and they want to grow and, and you know give the best that they can and you know in, enjoy their role. Then the next step is the onboarding and setup. So that's uh, setting KPIs, having clear goals for what the role is going to look like, how you're going to manage performance, how you're going to measure performance, and then the IT setup. So again, everybody, and quite rightly, is very conscious of data and cybersecurity. So how is the IT set up that you feel uh, that your client's data is secure and that the, you know there's a risk of cybersecurity everywhere, but that there's no more risk offshore as you might have onshore? Then there's the, the ongoing management and coaching. So again, um, getting the best out of your staff so that they can um, deliver great results to your company, but also at the end, caring for your staff. That's the most important thing, looking after them and you know remembering their birthdays. It's not 
having someone who sits in another country who nobody really knows who they are, they just perform a task. They're your team. And, and the more you embrace them as part of your team, um, coach, you know, coach them as you would somebody onshore, and then have the support from your offshore partner is really important for the engagement activities and recognition and reward and, and you know, making sure they've got private health insurance and things in place um, so that they feel cared for and supported. And this is a slide I just wanted to share because it's a great um, visual of what good offshoring looks like. Um, in the middle at the bottom there is Trent, who's an accountant, and he's got a, a team offshore. And this is them sort of logging on to their morning meeting or their team meeting. And they're all engaged. They all know each other and work really well together. And I think it's it's the technology that allows this to happen. Um, it actually means that people can be really productive from anywhere in the world. And, um, you know, he was a great, he un understood, trained from an onshore person, understood their culture. He had done cultural training, which, which we definitely provide as part of onboarding to understand how the Filipinos work. And similarly, they do cultural training to understand Australia. And, um, and they have a very, you know, successful relationship with a good rhythm of how work moves between onshore and offshore. So a good process of who's responsible for what and how, um, how the information will flow. So lastly, I think just, um, I, I think I'm about on time, hopefully. <laughs> um, just wanted to sort of, as takeaways for, for you today, if you would like to look at saving 70% on your cost of employment or improving your revenue by 30 to 40%, I'd love to have a, a conversation with you outside of this event because everybody's business is different and everybody will be looking for a different job description and might not be sure if it's possible to find what they're looking for so my details are there at the in the bottom right but if you're sort of a step back from that and maybe not quite ready to have a a, a chat uh, just at the moment and you'd like to get a copy of our book is offshoring right for us it was written by adam conrad who i work very closely with he lives just here in carnegie and he's the founder and ceo of integrate and uh, wrote the book to sort of uncover the myths and unpack some of the questions that businesses who are new to offshoring uh questions they might have just to sort of uh, you know get them thinking about what's possible and answer some of the, the doubts fears and concerns that they might have so if you just scan the the code on the on the side there and you can just enter your details and we will send a book through to you. Fantastic, Delia. For me. <laughs> your timing is impeccable. Um, what I'd like to do is, first of all, let's give uh, Delia a nice uh, round of applause for an awesome presentation and amazing timing.